I grew up in upstate New York and my father was a rural property attorney. So I had a lot of experience being in his office in a small village uh, where he represented lots of farmers. Um, but I was really interested in science. And so when I went to college, I was gonna be a marine biologist and I studied marine ecology. I did some scuba diving in the Gulf of Maine, um, but really fell in love with some of the historical aspects of science, how science works, how it came to be. Um, and so when I graduated from my undergraduate, I had a degree in both history and biology and was going to go on and become a professor, a history of science professor. When I went to uh, graduate school, I um, was in a history of science program, a history program at the University of Chicago. And I really enjoyed it. Um, it was a great experience. I got to read lots of really fascinating works, but I felt like something was missing. Um, particularly the ability to put what I did into practice. It was nice to learn about different aspects of history and history of science, but ultimately I decided I wanted to, to do something, to have a more of an active uh, role and impact on the world. So one of my close friends was actually a law student at the University of Chicago, and so I sat in on a class there and I just absolutely loved it and decided that that's what I was gonna do. I was gonna go to law school. I never really intended to go to law school. I always wanted to be a history professor or a science professor or a marine biologist. Um, but after sitting in on this class, I decided it really, that was the place for me. So I went to law school at the University of Chicago where all first year students had to take a course called Technology, Innovation, and Society. And this was just a fantastic course for me. It was a course about how technology interacted with society, how it was affected by society, how it affected society. And when I graduated from law school, I was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to clerk for a judge on the Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit. And so while I was clerking at the Federal Circuit, I was able to see a lot of different kinds of patent cases and decided that was what I was going to practice in. I was going to do patent litigation um, as my main practice area after clerking. I clerked for the judge for about a year and then moved to San Francisco where I joined the firm of Munger Tolls and Olson. And I practiced with Munger Tolls for about uh, six years. And so uh, a lot of the patent cases that we dealt with dealt with uh, major issues, cutting edge issues at the time. Um, and that was really exciting to work on cases that were appealed to the federal circuit that um, I got to work on, to write the briefs and be really involved in. Um, it was a great time to be an attorney. I was uh, relatively young, I had a lot of energy um, and these were uh, intense cases. But what I really wanted to do is I really wanted to, uh, to teach and research on my own interests. Um, also going to law school enabled me to do something more than just write about history and write about science. I got to actually have a, a greater impact on the world. I'm thankful for what this professorship brings to the law school. Um, as the inaugural holder of the Hammer Boyd Professorship, I want to recognize the tremendous contributions both of David L. Hammer as well as Sandy Boyd and what they have given to the law school. Through this professorship, there will be an opportunity not just for the law school to support me, but also future scholars and professors in the future. Uh, creating professorships like this also allows the College of Law to attract more faculty members and to give our students uh, a better experience at the law school. So this professorship isn't really about me. It's really about the College of Law and the wonderful opportunities that it provides for the College of Law. My favorite part about being in the classroom is the opportunity to continue to push myself to better educate our students and help them learn. I particularly like bringing new innovations, new teaching innovations into the classroom and using them to help students understand the material in different ways. Um, using different kinds of teaching tools, I'm also able to improve our students' ability to quickly grasp concepts, to improve the confidence that they have in their knowledge, and help make the understanding and the learning that's in the classroom more equitable. My favorite course to teach right now is Introduction to Intellectual Property. This is a course with a really broad coverage of subject matter, and it gives me the opportunity to use some of uh, my new teaching innovations in, in the classroom. 
So in the Introduction to Intellectual Property course, we cover subjects like copyrights, patents, trademarks, and rights of publicity, trade secrets, a variety of different topics. And so over the years, I've thought about how do we cover all of these different materials in a way that's really effective for students to take away what they need to know and what they need to understand and to best represent their clients. And one of the things I love most about this course is that it provides a vehicle for trying out new things and getting them to work really, really well. So for example, in the Introduction to Intellectual Property course, I've developed my own open source casebook, uh, which I have improved over the years. My research assistants have helped me a lot in building out this casebook, and which we make available for free to the students so that the students don't have to purchase a, an expensive casebook, but can instead use this resource that we've developed over the years. This year, we added on the innovation of publishing it through Kindle Direct so that students could have a hard copy of the casebook for about $11. Uh, this is one of the things that students have told me they, they really appreciate um, this contribution. But beyond just it not being as expensive for the students, it also provides us with an opportunity to try new techniques in how we deliver courses, add new types of content, and really focus and tailor what's being taught in the course to this specific material. Um, another innovation that I have introduced in the class is I have largely flipped that class, uh, which involves creating uh, video lectures for content and then using mostly active learning exercises in the classroom. So in the classroom, we don't have too much lecture. Instead, I have videos that provide the lecture materials. In the classroom, we discuss cases, with that background understanding already set, we do lots of hypotheticals and exercises, we do group exercises, we do client counseling type exercises. And so by flipping the classroom, it's enabled for a lot more active learning to take place in the classroom. My main area of research focuses primarily on patent law, especially judicial opinions. Although that's kind of a, a narrow way to categorize it. Typically I have four to five projects going on at once that are all related to one another. I love patent law because it's an area that's constantly changing. It's all about technology and cutting edge technology and that's really, really interesting by itself. But I also like bringing new technologies and new tools to bear on old product problems. So an example of this is using natural language techniques and artificial intelligence techniques to analyze judicial opinions. It's an old subject. We've been reading judicial opinions for hundreds of years, and we've been engaging with them and interpreting them through lots of different techniques before, but now we have the opportunity to use some very advanced natural language processing and artificial te uh, intelligence techniques to look at these opinions in, in a little different way than we've looked at before. Um, and so I love bringing these new tools to bear on old problems, old questions that we have. And the research that I do enables me to do that. I got interested in patent law because of my interest in science and understanding how science and technology work, how they come to be, what drives technological innovation. And so for me, patent law was a very natural fit to that. Patent law is all about providing an incentive, an exclusive right to an inventor who invents a new technology, giving them the exclusive right to that new technology for a certain period of time in return for telling people about it, for disclosing how that new technology works. And so this is a, a common incentive mechanism that's used to try to drive new technologies. And so for me, it was a pretty natural fit to better understand technology and technological development, knowing about patent law as one important ingredient in technological development was something that was really important. But at the same time, one of the things that I always keep in mind is that it's not just all about patents. There's lots of other things that can cause or hinder technological development. And so even as I think broadly about all of these different forces that are driving technological development, many of them legal, many of them social, many of them economic, one of my main service roles at the College of Law is as the director of the Innovation Business and Law Center. As the director of the Innovation Business and Law Center, my role is to coordinate a range of different types of activities associated with innovation, business, and law at the law school. 
So I push and identify new courses that relate to innovation, business, and law. I uh, organize our semester speaker series. So every semester we have a, a speaker series of about six to eight speakers that is targeted primarily at law students at the College of Law, but this year we've been able to broaden that through the, the magic of the internet and through Zoom to encompass a, a number of people who aren't at the College of Law who watch our videos. I view that as a really important role. It helps me ensure that there is always a presence for thinking about innovation and how innovation interacts with business and law at the College of Law. And to bring in some really exceptional speakers for our students to hear and listen to at the College of Law. We've had everyone from judges to practicing lawyers, many of them alumni, to legal scholars, to legal tech experts who've come and talked about what their subject is and some of the important insights that they've learned about the law from their, their subjects. So that's a really great that's a really great opportunity for me to help our students especially learn about innovation, business, and law. For students interested in patent law, I would very much encourage them to read broadly. So don't just limit yourself to one or two sources of information about patent law, but really try to get a diverse range of perspectives. Because you're going to be representing clients with a diverse range of perspectives from a diverse range of backgrounds, um, and you're going to want to be able to advise them um, on their problems based in their particular situation. And so you want to have a lot of different perspectives about the law, particularly patent law, in order to be able to best advise your clients and really to be able to best understand the law. Because there's not just one monolithic patent law. There's lots of different lenses and views on what the patent law is and what specific aspects of the patent law are and how important they are. For students who are really interested in, in legal tech, which is really my other area of research, using new tools in order to provide legal services and change the delivery of legal services, I would definitely encourage them to understand the startup space, to understand how these technologies work and function, um, and to really get to know some other people in the legal tech space to start to build those networking relationships. Because legal tech really is an evolving and emerging field. It's an area where there are some good opportunities, but you also have to, to know people and you really have to understand how all of these different pieces work together in order to effectively deliver new types of legal services.